Hello guys, and welcome back to another cold episode. On today's episode, we are back with some more cards to look at. Honestly, I, I saw Infernoble Knights and I was like, okay, I have to talk about these, I have to look at these. Um, because honestly, Infernoble is a pretty cool archetype. Um, they've been meta in the past, uh, so getting additional support for the Infernoble archetype means that warriors in general are going to get stronger, and Infernoble as well is also going to get stronger. Now, granted, in the... TCG, I believe, Smoke Grenade of the Thief, one of the main reasons why Infernoble is at all good, is banned. And also things like Link Cross and the like are also banned, which were the main reasons why Infernoble was even playable, um, or at least at the top tier. So maybe these can, you know, solve some of those issues, mostly the consistency and, like, actually being able to play through interactions. The biggest problem that the deck has is being able to play through those interactions, things like Ash, things like Imperm, just kind of shut you down entirely. If you make the Ice Hold, you can kind of go from there, but if that does get interacted with, um, you tend to just not be able to play the game. So let's see if this solves some issues. Um, so Infernoble Knight Ricard... R R Ricciardetto? I don't know how to say that. Um, we're going to call him Detto. Uh, level 1 Fire Warrior, Tuner Effect Monster, 500 Attack, 0 Defense. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name once per turn, and only once that turn. You can banish this card from your hand or graveyard to special summon a level 4 or lower Fire Warrior Monster from your hand as a tuner. So notably, this is any Fire Warrior Monster, which is pretty, uh, interesting, but it is level 4 or lower, so it could be anything. And, uh, that's actually really nice. A lot of the Infernobles do have effects... Um, when they are, like, specialed in specific ways. Also, giving access to additional tuners is pretty nice. That means, like, any extender as well um, means that you can, like, continue your combos. Also, you could potentially normal summon this and link it off for, like, I don't know, Link Karibo, and then special summon by banishing it from the hand, or, or by banishing it from the grave, which is really good. Um... But you can only use that or the other effect, where if it is normal or special, you could target a level 4 or lower fire warrior monster in your graveyard, special summon it, but it cannot. Uh, but you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of this turn except warrior monsters. Ooh, that's interesting. Um, this is a very big lock. So I feel like this first effect, sorry, this second effect wouldn't be used nearly as often. Uh, I just think the lock is like too much. Uh, given the way that modern decks, or, or modern Infernoble decks work, um, locking them into only warriors does hurt. But I could see them kind of playing around that. I think this is a good card. Overall, pretty decent. Turpin! Infernoble Knight Turpin. Level 5 Warrior, Fire Warrior Effect Monster. I think it's supposed to be level 4. It's definitely level 4. That's just a typo. That's fine. Um, so level 4, Fire Warrior Monster, Warrior Effect Monster, 1400, 1700. You can only use the first and second effect of this card's name once per turn. If you control a monster equipped with an equipped card, you can special summon this card from your hand or graveyard, but if it is summoned from the graveyard, banish it when it leaves the field. So uh, just another extender to kind of get onto your field. That's very nice. Um, notably, it's not a tuner, which means that you actually can use uh, this guy in order to... Um, special this guy as a tuner, or you could just special summon him as a non-tuner, whichever you need. That's pretty cool. Also, uh, if this card is in your graveyard, you could target a warrior monster you control. Equip this card to that monster you control. If the equipped monster is used as synchro material, you can treat it as a tuner. Notably, you can treat it, doesn't mean you have to, so that's pretty nice. Um, honestly, it's a decent card. Um, it triggers itself as well, because like you could send it to the... For example, you could special summon it off of this guy, and then you could uh, send it to the graveyard if we're like a synchro summon, right? And then uh, bring it, or like equip it to one of your warrior monsters, and then trigger a second one that you have in hand. So that is something that you could potentially do. Um, just kind of like thinking of the uh, the other cards. Um, a lot of, like, Renald is pretty good to, like, freely special summon itself. There's a lot of, like, different things that having this guy in particular to just get you an extra special of a non-tuner is very nice. So, yeah, that's nice. We're also getting a 5, a level 5 at Synchro, which is very cool, uh, with the 1 and the and the 4. Makes sense. Angelica, Princess of Noble Arms, level 5, Fire Warrior, Synchro, Effect Monster, 1,200 attack and 2,400 defense. Interesting. Um... Not something you put in attack position. Uh, a tuner and a non-tuner monster. You can only use the first and second effects of this card's name once per turn. Cool. It is generic, notably. 
So keep that in mind. If this card is special summon, you can add a card from your hand that mentions Infernal Knight, Emperor Charles, or Horn of Oliphant from your deck to your hand. Uh, I don't know exactly what cards specifically mention him. Hold on. All right, so I just checked, and it's actually all of the new cards. So there you go. All of the new cards are what this is going to be able to search. So that's pretty interesting. Um, makes sense. Uh, all right. When a card or effect is activated that targets this card, or when this card is targeted for an attack, quick effect, send a fire warrior monster from your deck to the graveyard. And if you do banish this card until the end phase, then you can special summon a Roland monster from your deck or extra deck. Interesting. Notably, it doesn't ignore summoning conditions. I don't think that matters with any of the extra deck monsters, um, or the Roland extra deck monsters. But... This is actually pretty decent. Uh, if it were to be like impermed or something like that, you can tag it out, um, which means that like imperm effect Valor just don't work on this card, which is very nice because you actually just generate more advantage. Um, then you can also send a fire warrior, which is also good because a lot of them have the ability to equip themselves from the grave. So that's also crazy. And then you also get an additional special summon, which is just truly insane. And it comes back during the uh, during the end phase. Which is just insane. That's that's a very, very solid card. Depending on the rest of the cards, or, or more specifically, depending on the cards that it searches, uh, this is already looking really promising for this archetype. Um, they're already pretty good, and now they're getting <laughs> Link 1 as well. Link 1s are absolutely crazy. Link 1, Fire, Warrior, Link, Effect Monster with 3,000 attack. But it specifically requires Emperor Charles equipped with an equip card. So it does make sense. That it is a 3,000 attack point monster, because it's basically, you're trading out the Synchro Monster for the Link Monster. I don't hate this, but it's weird. It does make sense, because, you know, it's Char Charlemagne, right? They're the Knights of Charlemagne. Charles is the Emperor uh, of that storyline. If you don't know, uh, it's the seven French Knights of Charlemagne, I believe. Um, that's the story, the historic story. So if you're interested in, like, what this is based off of, there you go. Uh, so it does make sense. Um, but if this card is Link Summons, you can target an Infernoble Knight, uh, sorry, an Infernoble Knight Emperor Charles in your graveyard. This card's name becomes that monster's original name. So basically, you're just making it Charles, um, and they wanted to name it Charlemagne. That's all that's happening. Uh, and replace this effect with that monster's original effect, then equip it with this card as an equip spell that gives it 500 attack. So, <laughs> basically, what it's saying is, um, you just, when you Link Summon, you're also just... Synchro summoning Infernova Knight Emperor Charles, but bigger. He he's just he's just bigger. He's now three thousand five hundred instead of the twenty nine I think he is, or is he twenty eight? Um, something like that. I don't think he's quite three thousand. Uh, which is very funny. So there's that. Um. And then he has a second effect. He gains... So he gains... So so the first effect is replaced by that that monster's original effect. Allowing you to still, like, pop equip spells um, and destroy destroy monsters um, if you if you get an equip spell equipped. So there's that. Um, you can still smoke a grenade in, like, OCG land. So there's that. That's actually crazy. Uh, but alas, we also have, once per turn, when a spell trap card or effect is activated, quick effect... Send a, an equip spell from your hand or face up field to the graveyard, negate the activation, and destroy that card. That's actually really good. Additional uh, interaction. Uh, you have a pop now of a of an effect. You also have the ability to send a... Um, uh, sorry, to, to negate a spell trap. So you don't have to rely on other monsters or other archetypes uh, in order to get that. But in all honesty, uh, I don't think that matters all that much. Cool, moving on. Uh, all Mace. In for Noble Knights, All Mace. Alright, you can use the first and second effect of this card's name. Oh, sorry. You can only use one of the first and second effects of this card's name once per turn, and only once that turn. While this card is equipped to a monster, you can equip an Infernal Arms Equip spell from your deck or graveyard to an appropriate monster you control, then destroy this card. This is very good. It just auto-trades for another of your Noble Arms, and, uh... That's actually very nice. Uh, a lot of the Noble Arms are pretty good. And just being able to equip... Um, to, like, trigger... Again, to trigger this guy. 
or your uh, your Charles, that's very solid. So all in all, you can send, or sorry, if this card is sent to the graveyard because the equipment of monster is sent to the graveyard, you can target one of your fire warrior monsters that is banished or in your graveyard, add it to your hand. This, huh. I don't know how I feel about this one. This one's fine. I don't think it's, like, all too great. I, I'm i probably missing something. I don't know Infernobles too, too well. Um, but this this seems like a kind of weaker equip spell. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily something that they needed. The uh, The ability to equip another mon or an another, another equip spell is nice. It triggers some things. But other than that, the fact that it's not, like, a quick effect to do that is the biggest issue. Um... So, there you go. We have a Noble Arms Museum, a field spell! I love everything getting a field spell. It's so nice. That's that's a lie. I'm just straight up lying to you. Fire Warrior Monsters, you control, gain 500 attack. Just straight up now, this guy right here is a, a uh, 3,000... No, he's now a 4,000 attack point monster because of reasons. Uh, where were we? Uh, once per turn, you can pay 1,200 life points, add a Noble Arms card from your deck to your hand, except Museum, and notably, that didn't say a hard once per turn, meaning you could cycle this. You pay 12, add a Noble Arms card multiple times. So if you have access to this multiple times, you can add multiple Noble Arms. That is already crazy. This is already a great effect. Don't care about anything else. Don't care what Noble Arms card you're searching. That is an insane effect. Um, okay, not really, but that's a really good effect. Once per turn, if you applied this card's second effect this turn, you can target a Noble Arms monster card in your spell trap zone, special summon it. Also, if you did not control Charles at activation, you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of this turn except for warrior monsters. That lock is something that you can definitely play around a little bit more, but... Um, it, it basically is saying, hey, we want to lock you specifically into warriors, which I don't think matters too much with the actual archetype, but it does matter with uh, what you're actually wanting to do with the Infernoble cards. So, honestly, uh, this card is pretty good. This one, not so much, but uh, hey, being able to search this and then activate it in order to pop cards, that's pretty nice. Um, it seems like they are now also able to kind of play through interactions with their actual... Um, in for noble stuff it looks like they're actually gaining a lot more uh, stuff to do things that you need to kind of interact with um, so pretty cool and then of course we have a normal trap card the epic poem of Charles you can only use the first the first and second effect of this card's name once per turn and then we have reveal a noble arms equip spell wait hold on Sorry, I was like, everything I've read up until this point has been like, oh, you can only use the first and second effect. And I was like, I needed to make sure that Noble Arms Museum was, in fact, just a soft once per... Sorry. Uh, reveal a Noble Arms Equip spell in your hand, and if you do special summon a Noble... Or an Infer... In the Infer Noble Knight monster from your hand or deck, then either equip it to the reveal... With the revealed card, or send the revealed card to the graveyard. Okay. From your hand or deck, equip the reveal card, uh, or send the reveal card to the graveyard. Wait, hold on. Reveal a noble arms equip spell in your hand, and then special summon from deck. Okay. Um, and then you can also equip. Oh, wow, that's pretty good. So if you have this, uh, you can go museum into searching any of your noble arms. Reveal the Noble Arm, Special Summon, Equip, Trigger Charles, Pop a Card. Now you're off to the races. <clears throat> in theory. Um, you can banish this card from your graveyard, target it in Infernoble Charles in you control. Equip it with a Noble Knight monster from your hand or deck with an Equip spell that gives it 500 attack. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is pretty good. You can use both effects on the same turn. So you can go uh, activate the effect pop with Charles effect, um, send it to the graveyard, banish, and then equip to prevent your monster from being like targeted or anything like that um, due to the monster effects. I don't remember which ones protect from targeting and you know card effects and, and etc. But uh, all of these are really good cards. None of these cards are bad. All of these cards kind of like all of them do what the archetype is want to do and they're boosts to the archetype that they did need they're not necessarily going to make it i think 
overpowered in any regard, but this definitely gives the archetype a more focused game plan. It does give them some extra deck or like some type locks that you do need to play around, like only being able to summon um, warrior monsters by getting more powerful effects. I do like this. This is honestly how most archetypes should be made. They're centered around the game plan that they had. Um, they are uh, focused in on how that game plan works, right? Making Charles, going into Charlemagne, et cetera, et cetera, right? Um, and then also like utilizing the unique mechanic of that. That is one thing that I love about Yu-Gi-Oh! And I'm just going to quickly spiel about it. Uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! is super cool with the way that it's, uh, it's in individual archetypes interact, right? Like when you play Magic and you play a red deck, they all kind of play the same, right? But if you play Yu-Gi-Oh! Each archetype plays so very different, right? So you could play a Earth deck, but that Earth deck could be Adam Spaders, which plays very differently from another Earth deck, Megalith. Megalith plays very differently from another Earth deck, Guru, right? Or I should say Subterra, right? All of those play very differently from each other, and that's super cool. Um, and so, yeah, just seeing them really commit in on the uh, this idea of the equip spells and actually utilizing the effects that your monsters are given by the equips, but also more importantly, that are activated due to the, your equips is very cool. So I like seeing it cool overall. Uh, I would say these are some good cards. Are they going to be meta? Probably not, but um, they are pretty decent. Uh, yeah, there you go. That's all that I have to say. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you did indeed enjoy it, I like us very much. I appreciate it. And if you want to check out more content like this, as well as more Yu-Gi-Oh, then just be sure to subscribe. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. And remember to always, Stay frosty. Bye-bye. Shout out to the Frost Guard, my members. Thank you guys so much for the support, and I hope you enjoy the content.